Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Doer's Cast, a podcast powered by Entrepreneurs at Austin, where we focus on featuring entrepreneurs, business owners, and just people who put action to their ideas. So today we have a very special guest. He is a native of Detroit, Michigan. He went to Arizona State University and uh, got a bachelor's from in aviation management. And now he's here in Austin, uh, founded his own company called Rise, where they are building these autonomous drones that perform inspections on aircraft. So super, super cool stuff. And we're super glad to have him here on the podcast today. Um, you can find their website at rise.io. That's R-I-Z-S-E dot I-O. And um, we'll link his socials down in the description. But without further ado, please welcome our very special guest, Mr. Colby Harvey. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me here. It's a, Seriously, it's a pleasure. And uh, thanks for inviting me on. I can't wait to talk to you guys more about what it is that you're doing. And I, I really... I really like feel because I'm off off cuff before this. You know, you, you're the doers podcast. It just yeah. makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. because people yeah. just talk, and I'm like, <laughs> we got we got we got we got shit to do. Excuse me, if I can yeah, speak no, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but um, how you been, man? Like, how's everything going? Oh man, how much time do we have? <laughs> like, yeah. like we want to go into how I've been, man. I'll, I'll, yeah, I've been, <laughs> I've been good, dude. I've just been, I've, you know, I'm traveling. I'm going to go see my partner up in California on Thursday, yeah. and just, you know, just building the team along. I got yeah. them all standing desks, so, <laughs> you know, awesome. healthcare, awesome. health focus, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about Rise, what it is, um, and like how you got it started? Sure. Yeah. 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 So Rise uh, is a. Mm, so it's an interesting way that we want to say this. So I guess a way to say it is, is, is through our mission statement. So RISE is, autom is augmenting human potential. So what does that really mean? You know, we, we're developing advanced autonomous systems, computer vision algorithms, um, and ultimately packaging all of that into an, a U.S.-based autonomous drone that we've developed here um, over the past two years um, with very in terms of amounts of money that it takes to build hardware, a hardware company, and a very little amount um, to execute. Um, so what it is that we do specific, specifically, excuse me, is uh, automate the visual inspection process of aircraft. Now that may sound boring to like really anyone, cause like, they're like, why do you care? But really, you, sh you should care. Like you wanna make, you wouldn't get in your car if you knew that the, the oil was leaking and yeah. I mean, your brake fluids or lives were cut, so. Mm -hmm. It's the same with the plane. So what we do is we ensure the safety of that aircraft. We ensure that that thing makes it from point A to point B and flies safely. Um, and we do that by a couple of different methods um, that I can go into a little bit more in depth or yeah, just kind of yeah. keep it high level. <laughs> whatever you want, whatever you want. I mean, it, it's really just, it's just, just artificial intelligence and, and not, in the, not in the buzzword sense. Like it, it's really like we are training models that we have had to create and work in an excessively difficult industry yeah. um, that's been really stagnant to, to innovation and changes because of the heavy regulatory hand that's, that's on the industry and like the huge barrier of entry. But I decided, hey, I wanna do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a huge barrier of, of entry like in terms of like financially? Or oh, um, I mean, that's one aspect, sure. But really, it's, I mean, it's, it's as large as the aviation industry seems, it's, or aerospace and defense market seems, it's, uh, it's pretty small. Everyone does, everyone talks, everyone knows one another. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. like it's kind of crazy. Um, but when I say barrier to entry, I mean, like, if you want to try to do anything, especially around drones, you're mm -hmm. talking like FAA involvement, you're talking yeah. like the OEMs or original manufacturers, so like the Boeings and, um, Airbuses mm -hmm. of the world, and it's it can be a very very steep challenge to not only create something within an industry that's very pragmatic and slow to change, but now you're like you're you're going you're fighting up when trying to really penetrate it, yeah. um, as well as the unions. So finding that happy medium and, and finding that penetration point was something that I'm uh, very proud of. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, how did you get it? So you said you started it in while well, you're in college actually. So how did you like get it off the ground? And what was that initial process like? 
Yeah, no, that's a that's a great question, and especially for this this for a podcast because people that really want to know how what you have to do is like you cannot be you can't be lighthearted. <laughs> I'll be honest, you, yeah. you you can't be really that risk adverse. Like you got to you, you got to be willing to take a risk. So I I came up with the concept for Rise under an unfortunate other name back in 2017 <laughs> that I won't repeat here, um, but really like. I had the opportunity after I switched my major because I attended Arizona State University um, for initially for computer science. Um, so I was there for about two two years till I got to Calc three, and I was like, Nah, <laughs> I'm okay. Um, I just cried through Calc two. I don't need to do this to myself again. Um, and I, I I had the opportunity to intern at a repair facility that was based out in Arizona that I got to work in, and really got a, a really strong sense of a key glaring issue that people, if you're just generally in the space, wouldn't notice because why, you know? So I had the opportunity um, and this opportunity I had to make, like I found this person, I found the internship, I like I did all the groundwork yeah. that I needed to do to put it together. But after I identified the issue, I had already been in, you know, kind of in a startup before at ASU, and I had always wanted to do something outside of just kind of working for some big company because, yeah. like, that's that's not cool, that's not sexy. <laughs> um, so I've i found this way because I wanted to be in the aviation industry mm -hmm. specifically. So I did my I started doing market research. I started getting an understanding of the particular problem, if there was even a problem, mm -hmm. um, and I just started interviewing. I just started talking to random people. I would just go through my network, go through my friends, go through my friends' friends, <laughs> talk to their dad, talk to their mom, whoever was in the, the industry in the specific space until I could, I, I put enough like information together. I was like, oh, this is something that, this is something that needs to, needs to change. Mm. Um, so you talk to a lot of people and then they'd be like, and then you mention it and then they'd be like, yeah, I haven't thought about that. Yeah. yeah that's actually a problem. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, they, they really, and you'd be surprised people that be in that, that are in it every day. And they're just like, no, nah, you know, like, yeah, I didn't even think about this. We can do this. We can do this. And like, we can do this in an hour and, and instead of like 10 to 80, yeah. like I don't have to tie to the ceiling of a freaking, um, <laughs> like hanger and yeah. look and like risk my life just, just to do this inspection. And, and from there, like I just, started building i like started an llc because i like i that's what i knew how to do how yeah. initially asu kind of taught us like what process to take and mm -hmm. i just extended my student loan debt and got a drone um got the wrong drone because you couldn't do any development on it um and then i what i actually ended up doing um, which was what i can attest to uh being one of the more successful very successful aspect of when you're starting to grow a business especially if it's a technology company mm -hmm. I put together a proposal for the School of Engineering because I know students have capstones. Yeah, yeah. They have to be able to do a capstone and there was no stipulation for me to not do it since I wasn't like some outside corporation from ASU. Well, yeah, technically I was. Mm -hmm. But like that way I put in this proposal and I got a team of six engineers. Yeah. So those six engineers were, they were all very, 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 very good. There was one that particularly stood out and who is now my co-founder mm -hmm. now, um, who's amazing. The other guys are just like, oh, this is for a grade. But you, that's, that's one yeah. way that you can find a, a co-founder too. Yeah. Find someone you can link with. And, just, awesome. and then just keep building and people tell you no, say like, nah, I don't, I don't believe that. Nah, screw that. And like, you don't, you don't know because you're not in this. And like, yeah. I'm gonna do this. So you started it at school, had all these great people that were able to help you. Um, had these resources at the school, I guess. And then you mm. said you um, you were at Google for a little bit. So was this like something that you were still working on while you were at Google? Yeah, yeah. I guess skipping ahead. Yeah, I did. I did work at Google. I guess some of my background is like I I worked at several Fortune 500 companies mm. all while I was in college. By the way. Oh wow. <laughs> um, so I was uh, I worked at American Express or at least a subsidiary of it. Um, I worked at Charles Schwab um, and ultimately ended. Um, Charles Schwab when I graduated uh, and moved to San Jose slash San Francisco when I uh, got a job working working for Google um, on their Google Cloud uh, side. So during that period of time, after I graduated and got my degree, had moved, I had still been you know on the side working you know working on what we're doing. You know I found one of my uh, a business partner who's helping me raise 
funding because, you know, I'm young and anyone that's going into this, you're going to hear this a lot. Like you're young, you never had an exit, you never done this, you don't have any experience. Yeah. Take it with a grain of salt because some of it, a good portion of it is true, but it's about your deter- determination and perseverance on like learning to move to the next step. Yeah. So while I was in school, I mean school, excuse me, school. While I was in Google, um, I still continued to take the time to work with my team and saying, hey, you know, what's what we're building, these are people that I'm talking to, these are investors that I need to talk to, and all my time went to trying to raise capital. And so finally in December of 2018 is when we closed our first, like I guess our angel, our angel oh, round. Wow. Yeah, tell us about that. Like, um, so you, you said you were fundraising for our angel round, yeah. Angel round. Yeah. Then. Well, let me, let me tell you, I'll tell you about it. Sure. I'm like, have you ever had two hundred fifty thousand dollars just dropped into your bank account at one point? Like, oh. <laughs> I could tell you, it was it was pretty nice. But also, as nice as it seems, because now I'm dealing with you know larger sums of money as yeah. we're raising and such, it goes quickly. Um, so just when you're in that state, just be as lean as possible. And by lean, I mean just like you're you're not going and buying anything extravagant, trying to find a big office is you got to run as lean and make that money last as long as possible. Because the reason, one of the reasons why we've been, we've been successful, especially now over, you know, the course of 2021 Mm -hmm. is that a lot of the investors that, you know, and and customers that we've seen, um, and honestly, a lot of industry players are just so astonished and so surprised that, you know, we've raised, still raised to to date less than $3 million at this point. Um, just about almost two million. Um, but we've built a drone that's won a Red Dot Award now that's operating. We've built a, a very robust um, like ML, machine learning and artificial intelligence platform for just honestly every for everything, for the, the flight, the navigation stack. And we did that for honestly something that would be in a big company's like, they're just like, oh, that's a, a write off. For us, yeah, yeah. that was life. like. But we built something that these large industries and these large companies couldn't do, especially not for under, for what we built it for. So they're like, that's not that's unheard of. Like a lot of the investors have talked to them, like, how did you manage to build that in this short amount of time? It's like because we were lean and I was hungry, and I went hungry for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. I didn't I didn't go hungry. Um, yeah. But like uh, we worked really really hard, and we understood the constraints that we were operating in, and we took those constraints as a, you know, as a, as motivation to continue to thrive and build, and that's what we did. And you know, we have a, a deployable product. Yeah, um, that's a super good point. Like, you know, a lot of, or not a lot, but some companies when they're starting, like, you know, they're more privileged than others in terms of like funding or resources. And I feel like mm-hmm. um, that doesn't always help because, you know, it doesn't like force you to have to like be creative and like find those creative ways to make your money last and be resourceful because you know it's not about how much you have and then it's about um, how long you can make what you have last. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, pivoting to like um, like challenges you faced. What do you think are some of the as like a as a CEO of the company and as an entrepreneur? Like, what are some of the biggest obstacles that you've faced and how did you overcome them? Mm, that's a great question. What are some of the biggest obstacles I faced? Where there's been a lot, so. You can talk about um, as many as you want. No, yeah, no, no, definitely. So when it comes to like the obstacles that I, I face, I mean, there's always the obstacle of you know not enough money. That's always an obstacle that you're always dealing with. Um, to add on to the level, of, uh, another layer of complexity of that, I'm like, I'm a I'm like I'm a black man, mm-hmm. in this world in the United States specifically. And that has its own set of unique challenges and rules that you have to play by. Because for example, like I, it still feels like, not still feels like, excuse me, until what happened with George Floyd and Mm -hmm. everything that happened, people of color, minorities weren't really taken seriously in terms of like investment. It's always your straight white counterparts that were receiving large sums of money. And even when that happened, even here at Capital Factory, like they rushed to put together a, a, a group um, for like, you know, black founders so they can all like kind of talk about it. And they're just like, and so I heard things that I related to. It's like, we're not trusted with the capital. I'm like, they don't believe that we can deploy. And you know, I was asked a question, one of these questions from um, a VC fund or a, uh, yeah, an LP fund that was investing in actually my venture capital fund, the one that, fi- that invested in us earlier this year. Um, 
and they asked me a pretty unique question. They're like, what is it, you know, you know just because, so my, my, my fund there, uh, they focus on uh, minority and, and women investments. Mm -hmm. um, and I love them, they're really, really great guys. New Age Capital, take a look if you're, you know, if you're, you guys are, yeah, if you guys are looking, you know, not looking for capital, but like, you know, looking for a place to start, especially if you're um, uh, of a minority as well. I mean, even not, but still, that's what they really focus in. Mm -hmm. But they asked me, what do I, how do I feel about other venture funds that, I mean, even these large ones, like these Andreessen Horowitz of the world or these, um, you know, lighter, just, well, 8VC or whoever, all these funds that are coming out with these, you know, minority investments, like minority funds that they're, yeah. they're spinning out. And I'm like, I, I was honest with them. I'm like, I gotta be honest. I'm like, it, it feels like BS. Mm -hmm. Like it, it really does still feel like BS because one, you're not even, they're not, you're not even dedicating a third of a third of your capital into that fund. You're putting like maybe 20 million in, 50 million in, where you still have this, when you have dry powder of up to a couple billion dollars. Yeah. Like, so it, it still feels like to them, they see it as still a calculated risk. Mm -hmm. And even if, like even if they don't see it as calculated risk, they like the deployment of the capital, like you, you have to jump through these hoops. Like any time you're raising money, you have to jump through hoops. Yeah, yeah. Dealing with people that are you know, gonna give you, you know, hopefully in the end gonna give you money, but like don't ultimately at the end of the day do not understand your industry depending on what you're doing. And so they, you know, it's just kind of like this managed risk but even more so on like minority and women-led investments. Mm -hmm. So that's that's another, that, that's a yeah. challenge that's been, I mean, honestly, always ongoing because yeah. um, that's not something that can change. There's, okay. On the lighter side, there's always like dealing, like when you're hiring and expanding, which is awesome, now you're dealing with like other like people on your team. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to figure out, okay, how how is this person gonna react to this? Like, yeah. like how do I engage with this person? And you know, just make sure you have like a, a healthy cultural um, environment in mm -hmm. your company, which, which is a, that's a fun thing to establish too, uh -huh. by the way. Yeah, so I guess um, what you said is basically like trust, right? So building, um, being able to gain that trust from those those people who are funding you and also building trust like within your own company. Um, so how do you, how do you, like when you're bringing on new members or when you're trying to um, find people to work with, um, how do you, uh, I guess, establish your trust among those around you yeah that's a good question i mean and and some of it is going back to like the vc part but some of it is it's not that it's trust it's because again like i said they, they kind of put you through hoops like especially for yeah. me they're like i'm getting all this traction 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 but it's never enough mm. they want to see more I'm like okay i'm like they're like yeah. go out and get three pilots I'm like okay got them yeah. okay well that's still not enough we want to see you convert with them mm. it's like Come on. But when it comes to trust, when it comes to your team, yeah, you, you, you really got to, you have to build that trust within your team. Like you can't have a stable house if you have shaky foundation. Mm -hmm. So what I do specifically is like when I am interviewing people that are going to be on the team, even if it's someone I'm like, I, I, what I try to do is if they're, especially if they're local and you know, it's not COVID, mm -hmm. um, I, my last interview, I took him out to, not a bar, but I took him out to a place where we can go grab a drink, coffee, mm -hmm. something else. Get him outside yeah. of an environment where it makes them feel uncomfortable and really get a, a, a look at who they are outside of just work. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I'm like, you gotta see these people for eight hours a day. Or you're gonna yeah. see these people, even if it's on Slack or whatever it may be. So you wanna make sure you're making the, the right decision when you're making these hiring choices. Mm -hmm. And so far that's been working. Like I just hired a new, new technical project manager and it's, yeah. he's, Phenomenal, yeah. <laughs> freaking love them. But so is everyone else that's on the team. So you build that trust by being transparent, like being open and honest with your team. Um, but you keep that professional courtesy with them as well. Like they, they need to like everyone understands. Like I'm working towards this goal for building what it is that I have in equity because everyone in my company has equity. That's another form of trust. Mm -hmm. I don't want people just coming in, clocking in, clocking out, yeah. and that's it. I want them to feel like you're connected to something. Mm -hmm. So I also try to just do like cool things like video game day, like a competition mm -hmm. every month. I'm like, hey, I'm, we're doing AirPod Maxes this month. So <laughs> you win, you're going to win AirPod Max. What do you want? So <laughs> Have you ever had the issue of like, um, I guess, like people say they're going to do something and then like 
they don't meet that goal. Because I feel like that's something that I personally have have had issues with where, you know, like I'm working with a team and then people are like, oh, okay, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, you're going to do this. And then like someone doesn't do their thing and then it happens a couple of times and they're like, oh yeah, I'll get on top of it. But then... Yeah, well, is this in class? Is this something that's in um, class? Was this something that's both, like in, both a, in and out of class? In and out of class? Because I can tell you're just like college students are just <laughs> college students. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, yeah. like I did. There's a lot of times where I'm just like, "Yo, get it done, and we're gonna we're gonna fight." Like, <laughs> like don't play with me. Yeah. Like, d- d- don't play with me. But um, to answer your question, uh, yeah, it happens. I mean, it, it definitely happens in, in, in the terms of being a, being a founder. I'm like, there's decisions and there's things that you ultimately have to make at the end of the day yeah. to say, I'm like, hey, but ultimately the first thing that I do personally, and this goes back to that level of trust, mm-hmm. if I'm noticing that someone is underperforming or they're not, meeting deliver, they're not meeting the goals that we've set forth, my first reaction to them is not to yell, it's mm-hmm. not to freak out, it's not to get mad, yeah. but I need to understand what is, like, what's going on. Like, what is, is it something that is like, is it the work that's too, is it that the work's too hard or is it something else? Is there something else going on at home? Mm-hmm. Like, how can I help? And so that's the first question that I ask. Cause I, I'm like, honest, honestly, I want to know cause everyone has bad days. Yeah. You know, everyone, things are happening. I don't sure what's going on with your family uh-huh. life. Um, and I, I talk to, I, I talk to them. Now, if it's a continued thing that continues to happen, there's always this great book that my dad recommended to me called Necessary Endings which I would definitely recommend to read as well. But, you know, there's, there's just times where, you know, if it's just something that's not working out, you got to be able to make that tr- call. It's, you got to be strong, too. Like, being an entrepreneur, is, like I said, it's not for the, the faint of heart, especially yeah. when your team starts growing. Mm-hmm. You got you to be friendly, but you got to be strong. strong. Yeah. So and you, you got to have, like, pain tolerance. <laughs> that's something that... <laughs> pain tolerance, yeah. risk tolerance. You, I mean, you just got to... Honestly, I, again, like I said on the Founder Friday when we talked before, mm-hmm. I'm like, either I'm like, either it's... I'm masochistic or I just like, <laughs> or I'm dumb. Either one, it's working. But like, yeah, you gotta, I mean, you gotta be willing to take the risk and be able to stand behind that risk. Um, even if it hurts you. 100%, 100%. Hmm. Um, do you have any like inspirations or like people that you, you look up to um, for, I guess like when you started the company and also just like in general? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. So, let me write, so, the, when I say I talk about my dad a lot, this man is not my actual biological father, but he's the father that I, I one, if I had the choice to choose, it was him. So this person, uh, his, name is, his name is Dave. Um, he is the president of the, um, my, develop, my uh, development partner, actually. He's the president of that company. It's a, it's a MRO based out, in, based out in Tucson. And he was the first person that ever believed, that believed in me and believe in what I was doing before just like any judgment, just without a second thought. He's like, I love what you're doing. I love this. And like, I love that someone's trying to, especially young is trying to bring an innovation to this extreme. He's, yeah. Cause he's been in the industry for 30, 40 years. Mm-hmm. So he's, he's seen the inefficiencies and he's, and he just said, he's like, whatever you need. Mm-hmm. He gave me, I had access to the facility with my team. So I could use it literally went down there anytime I needed to do data collection or anything. And open access to all the people. So he's a he's really a a huge mentor to me, really, yeah, and someone that I really, mentor. yeah, he's definitely someone that I really really look up to. Um, and now even one of my investors, and this one's more recently. Uh-huh. Um, he's just a really just an all around great great person, great guy. Um, and he's the he's the CEO of a really large business jet company. Um, and so like the mentorship that I'm able to get from these people um, has been particularly awesome. Um, and then at the end of the day, I was my mom. My mom taught me how yeah. to be who I am. Uh-huh. She taught me how to be caring um, as much as I can. And then I had to develop the, the grit side um, a little bit more. But those are, mm-hmm. those are a couple of people that I, I definitely look up to. Nothing like yeah. super storybook, like, you know, like Elon Musk or anyone else, because honestly. <laughs> but like people that were, like, I've actually met and actually yeah. have, an imp- have had an impact on my life in some way. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, speaking of... You said skills that you learn. What did you? What would you say are the most important skills that you've learned um, as an entrepreneur? And what do you think are the most ins- important skills to have? Um, how to ask for money without asking for money is one good way. <laughs> um, 
because like I, I don't I don't know when I was younger I'm like I've always like it was always like taboo or weird to like you know ask people for money yeah. you know but when you're fundraising it's different like you know you have a goal that you need to meet yeah and you have funding like needs that you need to metrics that you need to hit so mm -hmm. you, you know that's 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 one thing um, oh man there's several others these are just how how do you ask for money without asking for money. You show them something cool and say, "Hey, is this something that you're interested in?" Like oh, yeah. you're saying, like you, you when you show, like you when you have a pitch deck. That's mm -hmm. normally when you when you're building a business and you're presenting it to someone. You make it so incredibly satisfying and so incredibly sexy that they continue just to ask, "Well, what about this?" They ask mm -hmm. more questions. Yeah. Like you may already have all the answers to these questions, but you want them to ask it. I see. That's why you didn't put it in the deck. Yeah. You knew they were going to ask because now you're gauging their attention. You're engaging them, and they're, now they're they're getting a little they're getting excited about what you're building or what you're doing, and then from there, you that's that's why the deck is, is you know structured the way that it's structured. You're saying like, hey, we're raising you know we're raising capital, you know we, we're looking for you know this amount of money for whatever valuation that you're looking for, and just say, hey, if it's something that you're interested in, I'm like I would love to talk to you further because I'd love to have you part of the team, especially yeah. if they they're a value add. So it's like it's it's directly asking but also indirectly asking yeah, that, um yeah. that kind of is how the ball would, unless you're talking to a vc fund then like tell them what you want mm, yeah that so. makes a lot of sense you know like showing them that 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 like interesting little glimmer of your company and then they're like oh show me more show me more and then yeah like, i want to see how to present is i think very important yeah just like i want to see you grow and i want to be a part of that growth mm -hmm. so but I'll always tell them how they're going to make money Really emphasize how they're gonna make money, because yeah, yeah. um, they got they, no one's gonna invest in you just because they like you, unless it's your family and your friends. Mm -hmm. You know, um, always tell them about their upside. But yeah, I mean, one of the other things that was you know that was a really important skill for me to that I learned over time was patience. Mm. Patience was like I was like not a patient kid. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I'm like especially now in the age of like, but you got to have you have to be willing to be patient just because someone has not replied to you immediately does not mean that they're not going to at all yeah. if it goes past a week yeah maybe give them a ping but like you have to make sure that you are not like upsetting the people that you're trying to work with mm -hmm. so that's a really key skill to learn was, was patience and then just managing expectations of, of expectations from yourself expectations from your team mm -hmm. expectations from your customers Making sure you're you're managing those expectations and aligning them with business goals, um, and technology development goals because you don't want to like overpromise stuff and then burn out your team. Which yeah. in a startup you're going to in the beginning because mm -hmm. trust me we're getting we're just now getting out of that. But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, those are those are a couple of goals. Awesome, awesome. Um, oh yeah, where where did the name Rise come from? How did you come up with that name? That's a funny one. <laughs> um, so we're actually in the process of um, looking at other options for names as well. Mm -hmm. But when I first, when I initially came up with it, you know, we were, um, we were just beginning to uh, start our fundraise. Um, and we we're just about to get our, well, actually we just closed our funding and we're just about to get like the, the check in, but like yeah. I had to set up the accounts and everything else. And I just did not want to keep the original name. Mm -hmm. um, and so I am creative to a certain point and I will admit, I can admit that. Um, so my roommate at the time when I lived in uh, San Jose, mm -hmm. uh, his gamer tag was actually called Rise, oh. the way it was spelled. <laughs> so I asked him like, hey, that's a cool name. Can I take it? He's like, yeah, sure, I don't care. Wow. Um, by the way, that same person actually is our, our, was our one of our engineers here at the company oh. too. <laughs> like he was... He, le he used to work at Sony and he left. He's just like, nah, I hate this and just came to work. <laughs> Obviously, I couldn't pay him what he was making at Sony, but like he really believed in me and believed in what we were building and loved what he was doing. You got to make sure that people are like, if, if they love it, attracting talent's not going to be hard. Yeah. Like I, I hear a lot, and those this off topic, but like in hiring, like I hear a lot of people saying, oh, well, getting talent in Austin right now is really hard. I'm like, I haven't really had a problem. Like, mm -hmm. I haven't had a problem at all because I'm like, it's really easy to find people that want to work on really cool stuff. So, mm -hmm. just make yeah. make it make it sexy. Make it sexy, yeah. <laughs> like, um, yeah, you said like having that passion is super important because 
I remember um, I was watching like one of the interviews you had, and you said you there was a time where you couldn't pay your employees for like two months, I think. Yeah. And um, did I did anyone like leave during that time, or was that kind of just like? So at that time, we only had one person leave, and it wasn't even because like he wasn't getting paid. He was mm -hmm. fine. He's just like, yeah, no, I'm cool. And, like I trust you, and I know I believe in you. And I know you're gonna raise the raise the capital. But this one, this one had to deal with like Im like immigration type of oh, work. Okay. So I'm like, at the time, I'm like, I couldn't, you know, there was insinuating circumstances within the government I that I could not afford to kind of mm -hmm. just throw at the time. I think it was like, it was like three grand or something like that. Three, three grand for like not a guarantee that it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, it was, it was ultimately because of an immigration um, issue, I but see. outside of that, that same we were, we still talk to that, <laughs> talk to the the employee that left all the time, and he's just like, you know, let me get my ear in here, and he's like, I'll come back. Ooh. So like getting that point and hearing people say, yeah, I want to come back because this is cool, and like, you know, you're awesome. I was like, cool. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you you've really been able to build a team of people who are really like well connected and who really share those same values, which is awesome because yeah. i feel um, like that's like the that's like the most like that, the, that's the foundational thing that you need to like yeah align them around a goal make sure that they're they're happy with what they're doing on because engineers are engineers are easy like mm -hmm. you give them a hard problem and a, like a patent like and like a way to solve it and that they can be creative and they're just they'll just go like um Honestly, a lot of people are like that from what I'm, I'm noticing. Mm -hmm. So it's just like you just align around core values and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're not a, you're not a dick. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, and you, you give people, you know, something that they want to do and a, a purpose to do it. And, mm -hmm. um, then they'll, then they'll, they'll stick by you. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, so, um, where do you see your business in five years? Hopefully on the NASDAQ which mm. would be great um so that, that's that's one area um but ultimately my my goal and one of my ultimate visions for the company is not just you know ultimate one in the next three years or next two years honestly like i want to see a one of my drones at every gate at every airport mm. in the world because wow. i want to collect as you know make sure that people know and people like rise or whatever we rename the company to yeah becomes a household name saying, hey, was this inspected by, by RISE? Mm. Like, does it, is there a RISE report that I can pull and like to see the safety records of this aircraft? Wow. That's what I want. But as a, like a, a further goal, like I really want to see our drones um, or our technology um, used in the space industry. Wow. <laughs> Instead of like having like our astronauts when like, uh -huh. like go out on the ISS oh, yeah, or whatever, yeah. 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 Like doing those inspections, I want my drones up there, doing those, keeping them safe, um, and then we're also just relaying all the technology. Plus, I like Star Trek, so I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty uh, cool uh, like transition. Uh -huh. You said you guys have these goals, and um, what what are you guys doing right now to to get to those goals? Or like, what are your what are your priorities right now with Rice? Yeah. Um, well, our pr priority has been really where it's where it's always been, um, and that's making the um, hu augmenting human potential, which means keeping these aircraft safe. Like our goal is right now. I mean, there's there's a lot of technical things that I can kind of jump, I can go into, but I, I'll spare you. Mm -hmm. But our our goal is really just to make sure that we can um, scale with our customers effectively. Um, that we are growing the right talent um, with, within the team um, so that we can deploy um, to our customers and ensure that they're the happiest. Because like, if your customer's not happy, then you're not, gonna, you're not gonna be in business for very long. So I wanna ensure that we're, like, we're meeting the, the goals and the, um, and the uh, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of the word, but it's like escaping my mind right now. But we're trying to make sure that we're like, again, just keeping our customer happy and meeting their expectations. That's yeah, what we're trying to do. Um, but also while like kind of managing and juggling like internal, like, you know, things like things that startups face by when they grow, you know, just like the team and how they interact with people, putting together processes. Um, like, how do we do this? How are we buying stuff? Because God, you guys are spending a lot of money. <laughs> like, um, 
But uh, yeah, those those are the goals. So I'm like, once we hit those goals, it's really like closing out our Series A because we're raising we're we're opening we've opened a Series A excuse me our Series A round and yeah. raising about 15 million, um, so we can move into an office, expand the team more, um, you know, kind of diversify our supply chain a little bit more, um, increase our sales goals, um, and really start to begin to branch into other verticals. Um, space being actually the next one. Um, yeah. Actually, that's currently being worked on with a really large company. Um, that was really, really exciting, um, as well as on the defense side. So there's a, there's a lot of key moving parts and key goals to hit. So you know, keep your OKR strong. Um, but yeah, that's what we're working on. Yeah. Um, all right. I think that wraps it up. Um, do you have like a final message that you want to tell to our audience, to everyone out there listening? Keep an eye out for a rise drone, and remember, it's it's it, nothing's given to you. If you are trying to start something, don't try, do, because if you don't, you're never going to. If you find excuses and reasons to say, ah, I'll do this next year, or I'll do this when I graduate, you'll never do it. Just jump, research, but jump. All right, guys. Um, this was Colby Harvey, CEO of Rise. Um, thank you so much for coming on our podcast and yeah, please check out his website, check out what he's doing. Everything will be down in the description, but again, thank you for watching guys and we'll see you on the next episode. Peace out.